Hello, my name is Dr. Shanda Blackman, and I'm a cardiothoracic surgeon. I'm here to talk to you about the management of chylothorax and demonstrate a video that shows extravasation of chyle from the thoracic duct during an esophagectomy. This is a paper that we published in the Annals of Thoracic Surgery, and this will be incorporated into the electronic textbook for Society of Thoracic Surgeons. I would like to thank the Society of Thoracic Surgeons for helping us to generate the video content. The thoracic duct is the body's main lymphatic drainage system. It typically courses from the cisterna chile that's located in the abdomen through the aortic diaphragmatic hiatus and posteriorly between the azagous vein and the aorta and the right chest. It crosses over to the left chest at the level of the fifth thoracic vertebral body and enters into the left subclavian vein. Anatomic variations are reported in almost 40 to 60% of patients. Chylus effusion can result from benign or malignant occlusion of the thoracic duct resulting in collateral formation or disruption of the main thoracic duct with subsequent leakage of lymphatic fluid into the pleural space. Disorders of chylothorax include lymphangioliomyomatosis, yellow nail syndrome, and malignancy. Iatrogenic chylothorax ranges from a half of, two, half of a percent to 2% after esophagectomy, and it can range from 1.4 to 2.3% after lung resection. Although it's rare, chylothorax poses a difficult problem because it can lead to immunologic compromise, pneumonias, and death in some series up to 30% of patients. Currently, there's no consensus on the optimal management of high output chylothorax. Historically, conservative therapy was remaining NPO, total parenteral nutrition, and pleural drainage. On all of these have demonstrated regression as high as 90% in some studies. Alternatively, Pleural drainage can be controlled with a more elemental, short-chain fatty acid diet. However, this takes about 14% longer and an average of 14 days. Surgical duct ligation can be successful in 90% of postoperative cases. Some have also advocated the use of octreotide to decrease splanchnic blood flow, to decrease the triglyceride content of chyle, and subsequently aid in sealing leaks, with some success in the pediatric population. Thoracic duct lymphangiography with thoracic duct embolization is a novel, less invasive, and potentially equally efficacious treatment method. Several studies have reported the efficacy of both techniques, the surgical thoracic duct ligation, as well as thoracic duct embolization separately. However, in a particular study published in the Annals of Thoracic Surgery, we attempted to compare treatment modalities and determine which percentage of patients sent for lymphangiography could undergo thoracic duct embolization. In this particular video, you'll see that we had thoracic duct transection with extravasation of chyle into the chest. The head is to the top, the feet are to the left bottom, and the video orientation is in the bottom left of the video. The white milky substance that you can see extravasating is medial to the azagous vein and anterior to the aorta. The free, open, flowing thoracic duct has been completely transected in this video, and chyle is leaking throughout the chest. The esophagus has been encircled with a penrose drain as retracted out of the way. You'll see that we were able to take a stapler and clip just the area where the thoracic duct was leaking. Most people, when doing an esophagectomy, do not recommend embolization or ligation of the thoracic duct as a routine clinical practice. Manipulation of the thoracic ducts can, can sometimes just cause the leakage in the first place. I typically only clip or ligate the thoracic duct during esophagectomy if I see active leakage of chyle. And for post-operative management, we'll go through the recommended algorithm.
When a patient presents with an iatrogenic chylothorax, we recommend making the patient nil per os and placing them on TPN. When the chest tube output is less than a liter or 1100 cc's over a 24 hour period, we recommend a trial of observation for up to 10 days. If this fails or greater than 10 days go by, the patient can undergo a lymphangiogram to look at the lymphatic drainage system and determine next best treatment. However, if the patient is, paid, is made MPO and placed on TPN and the chest tube output remains greater than a liter or up to 1100 cc's in a 24 hour period, then those patients should undergo lymphangiogram to determine the distribution of chyle drainage through the chest and where the leak is occurring. Some patients may be best managed with surgical duct ligation, and if that is successful, the tube can be removed, either before or after a fat challenge. However, if it is not successful, a lymphangiogram should be repeated. Other patients can undergo thoracic duct embolization, and if feasible, can have the tube removed if it has been successful over a 15-day period, period of observation. If it is not successful, those patients should then undergo surgical duct ligation, especially when the output is high. Continued observation without intervention with high output can result in mortality. We'd like to thank you for your attention.